<laughs> Hi, welcome to Gemstone Tarot weekend reading, 5th and the 6th of December. I'm laughing at my own jumper. <laughs> I put these things on and then you obviously I'm using like a selfie camera. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh my God, that's my jumper. And I've left my hot water bottle behind me as well. <laughs> One minute. Okay, let's get the hot water bottle going. Here's the jumper. So it's, um, oh, I haven't even got my microphone on actually. Hang on, <laughs> oh my God, it's all going on. Right, let's clip the microphone on so you can hear me better. First of all, I'll show you the jumper. So this is a unicorn with a rainbow. Um, we're just gonna be completely unprofessional and put the microphone there. Oh. Oh, by the way, do you remember Sandman who um, DIY'd that house for absolutely ages? Well, I saw it. <laughs> I went, oh, my hair's so messy. I went online and um, had it, you know, like you do with neighbours' houses. You're like, let's just have a look. Oh my God, it's nothing like I thought it would be. So I looked at it and I thought it would be restored back to all the Victorianness, but it's been completely modernised. I was like, Ooh, okay, very high end. I can now see, and it's sold immediately, I can now see why he sanded away for so long. He really did create something pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. So there you go, little update on Sandman's house. Okay, we are using a tarot that I found over there, <laughs> which is pink, the pink tarot. Um, Oh, once I show you some cards, if you can identify it, please do. Because it's one that I bought ages ago, second hand. Ooh. And it's really nice, actually. And you lot always know everything. There is literally nothing I have ever asked you that a lot of you did not know the answer to. That's a lot of double negatives. Ooh. Yeah, we're going in the upright. Now, do you remember I said when I look at a tarot set, I always look at the hermit. So we're gonna get our chance to look at the hermit. Oh, just not to crystal off. Anything could happen, and it does. This is all right, actually. Okay, overall energy, and it's a nice hermit. The hermit card. Now this can be lockdown energy. Certainly my lockdown hair is coming out today. Um, this is Virgo energy. It's the energy of going within. It's the energy of being in your cave. It's the energy of introversion. Next to it, we get the justice card. This has come up quite a lot recently. And are there scales? Yeah, there's some scales there. You, can, you can't quite see them though, they're, they're there. Okay, so there are some scales. This is weighing up two different things. And I think for some of us, we're feeling a strong sense of transition. I think everybody is. When you look at the astrology of it, um, particularly when you look at what's happening on the 21st of December, and again, look at Pam Gregory, look at Gregory Scott, go and look at an astrologer's um, YouTube if you want the, 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 I was gonna say the down low, the lowdown on any of the astrology that's happening in December, because there's a lot going on, okay? And we're feeling the weight of it. We've got this really rather auspicious looking death card. Oh God. Death to my fringe at the moment. <laughs> death to my fringe, oh my God. I can't control it. I'm not normally bothered, but it's really bothering me today. Okay, death card, hermit card, justice card. Weighing something up behind the scenes, but with that scorpionic energy of the death card, transition is happening almost whether we like it or not and the feeling that i'm getting is that things will start to move quite swiftly and there won't be the time to carefully weigh up in the venusian libran way that you might want to librans generally take their time harmonizing their surroundings their feelings you know weighing things up trying to make things harmonious color wise emotion wise just might not be the time for that. We've also got this really looking knight of wands, okay? Let's go, fire energy, fire sign energy. 
it's a message coming in or some kind of movement. I think of this in terms of the eight of wands, which I think is the eight, of, how can I never remember this? I think it's Jupiter in Sagittarius or it's Mercury in Sagittarius. It's Sagittarian energy anyway. It's that whole, it's happening, let's go, let's do it. Transition, woohoo! But then the rest of us are sort of feeling a bit, but I'm hermit, I'm in the cave, I've been tucked away, I'm introverted, I'm not ready yet. It's weighing those two energies up. And then, this is another card I always quite, and that's really interesting, I always quite like in a deck is the Nine of Swords. Because you always get a good duvet in the Nine of Swords. <laughs> Oh, you know how we were talking about the Hierophant the other day with his Saturday bog cleaning gloves on? Well, I, as you know, my sister makes um, quilts. I have made one once. I once did hand make a patchwork quilt. Never again. It brings out my OCD. <laughs> it was like, I must finish this quilt. There is no pleasure in the hexagons, you know. My sister makes the quilts of reassurance. She also makes lovely pillows as well. She doesn't um, sell them commercially, but I love a good patchwork quilt. And you get a lot of very good quilts and patchworks on the Nine of Swords. So just look out for that. This is a particularly good one. And what I notice, and I don't know if I can show you on the camera, is that there are scales. My nails are terrible at the moment, I'm sorry. There are scales here, Libran scales on the quilt. There is Libran scales, there is a jug pouring water, there is a pair of humans holding hands and a heart. Missing card here is the lovers, Gemini energy, the energy of the choice, the energy of the full moon eclipse in Gemini that happened on the 30th. Now I realize, I digress. We're gonna pull this together, I'm gonna to summarize. I know I'm keeping track of being summarizey. Okay, we have the hermit energy. We've been, to a certain extent, with lockdown, with the um, retrogrades that have happened, we've been in our cave, literally, figuratively, or imaginatively. We've been in our cave. Someone is hauling you out of the cave and showing you the sun, as in Plato's allegory of the cave. In other words, here's what's happening outside, and here's the source of all the truth, okay? Light bulb moment. Nobody really wants to be dragged out. The cave's kind of warm and cosy in there. You know, you're feeling a bit exposed. Death card, it's happening anyway. There is a transition. Nine of swords, it causes you some worry. Maybe you might be experiencing as well um, some difficulty with staying asleep, you know, kind of broken sleep. Um, your mind going at a million miles an hour, future thinking. Do you remember yesterday as well? Um, where we had the Six of Cups and we were being kind of nostalgic and there was this weighing up between fantasy and reality. It feels like that, okay. Then we get the gift card, the Six of Pentacles. There is a gift in this. Do you remember we've had the Knight of Cups quite a lot recently? There is a payoff, there is something good coming in the transitional qualities, okay, of that Death card. There is something on its way out, Six of Cups, nostalgia, but there is something on its way in as well, and it's quite transformational. Then we get, and we haven't had this for a while, The Fool. I love The Fool card. I mean, it's just, it's new beginnings, it's a zero, it's untainted, it's that kind of I'm gonna live forever energy. It's, um, it's got yellow in it, and I love yellow in cards, like this yellow. It feels optimistic, okay? There's a sense of, dare I say it, optimism. Unearned, unaccounted for, and not probably worth analyzing. It's just nice, okay? In the middle of the reading, Mars in Pisces, the Ten of Cups. It's nice. I knew it was worth wearing this jumper for my optimistic jumper. Okay, butterflies. It probably has a better name than that. Doreen Virtue's Butterfly Oracle, perhaps. Looking in vain on the floor for the box. Butterflies Oracle. Interesting. 
Oof. That's interesting, actually. Yes. Right. Motivation. <laughs> or lack of it. It's like being dragged out of your sleepy cave. I just want to lie here and eat biscuits. Yeah. It's probably a bit of a shock, the need to be motivated, especially if some of us have been a bit sleepy, a bit hibernation, you know? Um, I have a feeling that when we hit that 21st of December, things are gonna, it's gonna seem like spring early, okay? In this particular, in the Northern Hemisphere, it's gonna seem like spring early. I don't really understand what that means. Then we get adult children, and I'm talking about teenagers. This teenage energy of the fall is here. This is about our inner teenager, but for some of us, it's about our actual teenagers. Okay, take the next step now. That's what the fool is doing. This is what we're being pushed towards. It's a bit of a um, leap before you look, and it could be a little bit risky. It feels a lot riskier than staying in the cave, but just remember the serendipity in this. Okay, the serendipity in this. Healing with the angels, oracle card. Serendipity, what a nice word. And we get power. Oh, I love this card. The power card comes when you don't know your own power and it can sometimes not be the kind of power that you feel is powerful. Does that make sense? An inner power, um, an inner sparkle, um, and, a, and just an inner faith is your power, okay? Whew, I hope I summarized well. Leave me a comment, let me know, do like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Namaste.